Yeah, hey, Father Francis back with you yet again. This time uh, we're looking at, uh, uh, what was that guy's name? Played a detective on uh, TV. Always wore a trench coat and a cigar. Seems kind of like a really bumbling kind of a guy. I think his name was, uh, uh, let's see, I think his name was Columbo. Well, it is Father Francis, truly. And you're probably wondering why I'm dressed up in this kind of get up here and uh, smoking a cigar. I know we're not supposed to smoke on public grounds, but uh, oh well. Actually, I'm not on public grounds. Actually, I am vi vi electronically, visually, but uh, not uh, in real life, I guess. But today, um, what I am doing is we got a little kind of a detective motif because we're looking for clues. You know, it's summertime. It's the last, I think it's the last weekend in August. And uh, it just recur just occurred to me that I'm fear kind of like Gene Scott. Maybe some of you remember Gene Scott. He was a guy who used to also kind of have a gruff voice and had white hair. And, you know, he'd be smoking cigars and he'd say, now get on the phone and call. You support this ministry. So support this ministry. <laughs> Go to Mass on Sundays. <laughs> Anyway, but um, you're probably wondering why I got this little detective motif going on. And I'm going to explain that in just a moment. You know, um, make sure I got my microphone there. Uh, <clears throat> you know, um, during the summertime, I don't know about you, but I, I like to sometimes get caught up on all oh, reading old books and also looking at a lot of old movies. And, and, and one of my favorite things to do is to watch those old time detective murder mystery movies. I just love them. There's just so many of them. You know, I don't think summer for me would be complete without looking at Jimmy Stewart in Rear Window. Him and, uh, you know, I just love that movie. And it's just a great movie. Uh, another movie, another Jimmy Stewart, uh, J J J Jimmy Stewart movie, um, was when he played a, a, a detective, not a detective, but well, kind of a detective slash attorney in a, in, a, in a movie called Anatomy of a Murder. An excellent film, if you ever get a chance to see it. But, um... The reason why, again, we're looking at clues this week, especially when it comes to Columbo. Now, you know, one of the things about these detective murder mysteries that I just love, especially with some of the really great detectives, and of course, there's been many, you know, great detectives. Uh, one of, I love to watch the Miss Marple series. Uh, uh, that's just a wonderful one with Joan Hickson. She's, she's tremendous as Miss Marple. Of course, uh, Helen Hayes played Miss Marple in years and movies past. I like Hercule Poirot. Um, even Father Brown mystery mer uh, movies are, are, are a mystery series. Father Brown, who was written by G.K. Chesterton, the great Catholic author. Also, um, there is, uh, of course, who can forget the inimitable Sherlock Holmes. It's all elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary. But, um, you know, one of, the, one of our recent most beloved detectives, was a guy who smoked a cigar, wore a trench coat, and he always seemed to be kind of like, you know, not quite there, always a few steps behind everybody else. I just got, just got one more question to ask you. Peter Falk in Colombo. Now, you're probably wondering again where I'm going with all this, and here's where I'm going. You know, in our gospel today, Jesus asks people some questions. He asked his disciples some questions. He asked them, who do people say that the Son of Man is? My friends, that's a good question that we all need to ask ourselves. Who is this Jesus character? And what does he mean to you and to me? And so like a good detective, you're going to ask questions. But it doesn't stop there because Jesus gets an answer. He says, no, so tell me. Who do people say that I am? So the disciples, they kind of look around at each other, you know, that Cosby shrug or, you know, whatever. And they say, well, um, you know, okay, Jesus, some people say you're um, John the Baptist or Elijah or uh, one of the other prophets. And he goes, yes, 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 but who do you say that I am? See, he turns the question always back to you and me. You know, it's one thing to be able to have an intellectual or historical 
you know, knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, uh, or was, I should say, from a historical perspective. But from a faith perspective, we always say that Jesus Christ is because he's alive today. And so, but here's the interesting thing. He goes on to say something very, Peter begins to say, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. Bing! Question answered. But Jesus goes on to say, you know what? Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. It was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. And then Jesus turns around and he says to Peter, now check this out, Pete. He goes, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, I'm not going to go into the great argument that has plagued uh, Protestants and Catholics for the last 500 years, because everyone will like to take the, you know, I am rock or you are rock and try to parse it out. And uh, they try and do a lot of things that just are not really in keeping with Scripture. To me, the first principle of hermeneutics is the most literal interpretation is the one that to be going, gone with. And Peter says to Jesus says to Peter, you're rocking upon this rock, meaning, Peter, I'm going to build my church. Now, again, we're not going to argue that. There are some people that like to argue that question. But you know what? I, I just got one more question. Just, I'm sorry. I know I, I'm kind of slow at this, so give me a break here. But I want to know about the keys. Just tell me about the keys. See, that's the thing I always liked about these murder mysteries. The killer would always think that he had gotten away with it, especially with Columbo, because Columbo seemed like a bumbling, you know, kind of dumb, slow, like, buddy, you're in the wrong business. I mean, look at you for crying out loud. You're a mess. They thought that his outward messy appearance uh, belied the messy, muddled appearance of an in internal mind. And yet, sorry. And so as the killer would sit there kind of smiling to himself smugly, like, I got away with it. And just as the killer was turning on his heels to walk away free, you'd hear this, excuse me, I just got one more question to ask. I'm really sorry, but I gotta ask this one question. You know, I've been trying to think about it, and it's the keys. Keys? What keys? Yeah, that's the thing I asked myself too, those keys. You see, Jesus didn't just say Peter was the rock and he was the rock that he was going to build his church on. Many people will disagree with that. But there's now the question of the keys. You see, Jesus gave Peter the keys to, of the authority of the church. So whether or not you want to argue whether it's his name and parse it out, there's still that nagging question about the keys and the keys denote authority. You see, Jesus did give his authority to his apostles. And that apostolic lineage, that apostolic succession is now fulfilled in this man right here. Uh, any more questions? God bless you.